uranium was extensively mined in Portugal for over a hundred years. The mines are all now closed, but they've left behind them a legacy of ecological problems which need to be tackled to protect the environment. Now Portuguese scientists with funding from NATO's Science for Peace and Security programme are working on an innovative solution. Here at the Cunha Baixa mine, the extent of the pollution is clearly visible. All of this material is sludge from the treatment plant that was spread in this area and this is high concentrations of metals and radionuclides. In some areas, almost no plant life is able to grow, apart from the odd hardy species. And it was this that gave the scientists at Aveiro University an idea. Plants could be used to remove pollution from the soil. The idea of the, of the project, or part of that idea, is to use bacteria to bioremediate these uh, contaminated places with metals. So if you use bacteria that are already resistant to them, maybe they have some mechanism that can also be used to um, improve the bioremediation of these places. So that is the main objective of the, of the work and this part of the work. Traditional techniques for treating contaminated areas use engineering to contain the toxins. Here at the Urgaricha site, they've landscaped this area where waste products from uranium mining were previously dumped. The sealed site prevents the leakage of toxic material, but these techniques are not without their drawbacks. These uh, works, the remediation works, are too expensive and we have to uh, try uh, bioremediation approaches that have some more natural solutions, uh, efficient but also with down uh, in concerning costs. So that's a very important objective uh, that we are uh, expected from uh, the project. Bioremediation bio is important for us concerning soils, but, but also water treatment. So how does bioremediation work? The process starts with the identification of those plants which seem to exhibit a resistance to the metals and contaminants in the soil. Pine trees and rosemary growing in the mines were all found to show such resistance. Bacterias from the plant's roots are then isolated as these carry the genes that are resistant to the contaminants. Willow was chosen to reforest the area because it was already found locally and was able to thrive in tough conditions. In Morocco and Tunisia, the team are testing the possibility of using cork oak and Aleppo pine respectively. The team started to inoculate a number of these plants by injecting the bacteria into the roots. This allows them to grow in the area whilst bioaccumulating contaminants. Also considered was the use of ash and poplar, which are found locally. Bioaccumulation is when an organism, in this case a plant, absorbs more of a substance than it loses. Normally, this would lead to the poisoning of the plant, but now the inoculation from the bacteria allows the willow to tolerate metals, in effect becoming like a reservoir for the pollution. With large numbers of these plants in the polluted area, they can bioaccumulate the metals from the ground and stabilise the pollution in the soil, making it less likely to leach into the groundwater and have toxic effects on humans and the environment. It's an innovative solution to a complex problem. There are some incidents of cancers in the area where uranium was exploited. Uh, this is a real situation, but uh, formally uh, no one wants, wants to relate both things, the, the, the cancers and the, the mine. I think that we are uh, probably the, the first team that will try to apply this in, the, in a field situation and uh, apply it to mining areas specifically. These methodologies have been applied for uh, soils contaminated with organics, but not for metals. Already a year and a half into the project, and a team in Aveiro are making good progress. Uh, these plants are willow, and these ones are ash. Uh, these ones were planted by sticks and are uh, adapting to the lab conditions and are emerging, as you see. And uh, uh, now they are going to be transferred to contaminated soils 
uh, because we want to perceive if they tolerate the, the soils from the mine or not. And these tests have to be done in laboratory first. Uh, and then the last uh, part of the project, we are going to, to plant uh, the same species in the, in the field. The bioremediation project also has an international flavour, as Avera University cooperates with colleagues in Tunisia and Morocco, which have similar issues in their own mining industries. Several scientists from the North African nations are helped by NATO to work in Avero on developing these techniques alongside their Portuguese colleagues. Uh, when I come back to Tunisia, I can transfer uh, all the knowledge and uh, this uh, experiment uh, and the technology that I learn uh, here in uh, my laboratory, in our student in Tunisia. So it, uh, well, it is uh, very good uh, things and uh, we can uh, apply it, uh, this uh, technology also for uh, others uh, area, for others uh, treatment uh, of polluted uh, area in the future. With a project showing such promise, it all demonstrates the vital importance of supporting science. Well, it's important because NATO gives us the, the funds to support these research activities and uh, to collaborate with uh, Tunisia and with Morocco. And this is extremely important. Without these funds, this, pos this project was not possible. This is David Heathfield in Portugal for NATO Channel.